Hi everyone, I'm Alex from Sour Lemon Studios, and we're going to be playing through Tower Dreams today. So let's get started. So anyway, this is the tutorial. Uh, I, uh, these little reactive tutorial buttons were actually one of the first things I did for the game. I definitely, I, uh, I don't know, they're kind of a small thing, but definitely something I was pretty proud of. So we can kind of go through here, uh, pretty basic, like, oh, here's how you jump stuff. Um, it was a, it was a big worry for me not putting like a, a thing here that says like, hey, did you know you can wall jump? But I will say in the, you know, with the lots of people I've shown this game too, I've never seen someone not figure out that you can wall jump. So. It has seemed like that has been working okay, which is good. Uh, you know, I definitely don't want anyone like not figuring out how you play the game, but that is that has seemed to be fine so far. Um, so anyway, also this little lip here used to be way worse. Uh, it used to be like a real you you used to have, have to do like a genuinely like really precise jump to get through here. Um, so I'm very <laughs> very glad I fixed that because a lot of people would <laughs> genuinely get stuck like right here. And that would be really bad. So we are we're not doing that anymore. This is a pretty like doable jump now. So <coughs> I mean obviously if people played platformers before it wasn't too big a deal. Um, but you know, I'm very much trying to, you know, tailor this also for people that maybe haven't played as many platformers before. So at a jump like that where you gotta really get guess like precise is tough. Anyway, so here we got the main mechanic of the game. We got the, you know, slashing, pretty pretty basic stuff, you know. Um and like, yeah, there's not really a ton to it, you know, it's just kind of jump and then hit the button again and then you, there you go. Um, but I definitely, that was definitely very much a conscious choice to give this game a pretty simple thing going on. Um, don't, I, I really like a lot of complex games, but I think my favorite games aren't even the ones that are necessarily simple, but the ones that do a lot with a little, right? Where you have like, a like two mechanics and like the whole game extends out from that, right? Like, I think that's, I, I don't know. I, not only do I think is that impressive, right? Oh, I didn't mean to get hit there. That's not good. Um, but not only is that impressive, but I think also, um, I, I think also it um, makes your design more intuitive, and I generally kind of makes everything more focused. Because when you have a bunch of different things your character can do, like that's really cool, but you're not really going to use them a lot of the time. Like, you know, I think there's a lot of things and a lot of games I've played that have like a ton of options. And I, I felt like, man, uh, two of these options, like kind of do the same thing. I feel like you could like combine these, right? Like, um, so, you know, I think a lot of my favorite games are ones where that doesn't happen. Like you're looking at like Mario Galaxy, you know, it's probably my favorite game of all time. And that like, that whole game is literally just like jump and spin. And then like, a couple other moves that you never really have to use. So I guess that one is kind of, I mean, they have their uses, so it's not, it's not too bad, but you know, that's a very focused game. And like a lot of the quality just comes from the level design and how you use those mechanics, right? So I very much want to be designing something in that vein where you can get to grips with what to do very quickly, but it's still challenging and it's still interesting. Um, so anyway, uh, this is the this is the training area. Um, so you got this little dummy you can hit here. Uh, this is not every item in the game. This is just every active item. So this is every uh, uh, this is every item that makes you use another button. Um, there's also a bunch of passive items that work automatically. But I, so those those aren't really as useful to test out. These are much more like hey, if you want to really give these a shot. This area used to be awful. Actually, very recent until very recently, if you've played any of the other demos, it was literally just um, all of these in a row and it was super easy to actually get the one now at least you can jump through them and it's not really too too bad but before it was <coughs> kind of a nightmare honestly so um i definitely i could show off the shop here but we're gonna wait until well i'm doing one run i'll hop in there real quick uh so this is the yeah this is the this is the shop um this is the shop here, Richard. Everybody say hi to Richard. Um, he has a bunch of different, like, randomized phrases. I'm probably going to be adding more of these over the course of development, but I do think a lot of them are pretty funny. Um, definitely definitely pretty uh, pretty goofy, but I, I think it fits the vibe pretty well. And yeah, so um, I originally was going to have this game be a pretty straight roguelike and not really have any, like, permanent progression. Um, other than, like, you know, little costumes you can unlock. Like, like these don't do anything, right? Like, they're just, they're just costumes. Um, but... Eventually, I you know I realized that a lot of people told me that it would be great to have something to work for gameplay wise. And I also realized that the game is really hard. I think having something you can work towards to make things easier is great. So I added this golden heart that you can unlock that gives you more he max health, and that's a permanent thing. Um, and then there's going to be more I'm adding too. This is just kind of the only one for now, which is fine because it's definitely the most important one. Um, so I'm glad this is the one that's in the game currently. I didn't realize I could carry my item in here. That's fun. Um, 
Anyway, I've never, I've generally never realized that before. Uh, I guess I never turned off the counter. That's fine. Um, anyway, let's head back out here. Um, I could show off more of the hub, but I don't think there's too much else that's interesting other than this. So this is the difficulty slider. You can go between daydream and nightmare. I definitely want to change it so it's more like normal hard because a lot of people see this and they're like, "Oh, this is baby mode. I don't, I don't want to do this." But like, that's not what it is, right? That's you know, it, Daydream is very much like the intended normal experience, but some people are like, oh, I don't want to be weak, I want to do the the harder ones. And then, you know, they get pretty rightfully, like, you know, curb stomp when they try Nightmare their first time. So we're going to go through my Daydream, because that's that's the intended experience. Um, anyway, alright, this is a good first level, so we can go through here. Um, so, anyway, this game is kind of a, a compromise, actually, this pipe being here is a good example. So this game is kind of a compromise between being, like, totally random and not being totally random. Ooh, that's kind of an unfortunate first chest, just getting hearts. There's only a 1 in 26 chance of that happening. Um, but anyway, so this level is handmade, but the order you play the levels in is totally random, as well as these pipes on the side. These are totally random, so there's a lot of, it's kind of a, a compromise, right, where between... You know, because I there's a lot of um, there's a lot of platforming roguelikes out there, but I find a lot of them focus a lot more on like the roguelike and combat aspect than the platforming. So I really wanted to make a game that really did focus more on the platforming and had some really tight level design. Um, and one of the ways I you know I accomplished that was by doing handmade levels, which certainly has its pros and cons, right? The pros is I think generally you're getting a higher quality experience, right? Like I ideally this should feel like it was you know really like well crafted, right? And like you're really doing like a cool challenge. The downside is the game isn't quite as replayable because you know you're going through the same stuff like constant. Oh, didn't mean to. You're going through the same stuff. Uh, it, there are some ways to mitigate that, right? Like. Um, you know, I think just inherently, intrinsically, it is fun to get better at levels you've played, so you can still feel like you're getting something out of doing something more than once. In addition, there's the ranking system, which you'll see at the end, where you get a ranking for each le for each level you play. Um, and, um, you know, the first time you clear it, you might get, like, a C, and then it'll be, you know, it'll be... Um, motivating to try to play again, so you get, so you get a better ranking. Uh, let me see, can we... Oh, we can get something. Um... Let's see. Yeah, so this is the shop. Uh, there's a whole random selection of items you can get. We can also re-roll if you want, but I think I'm going to take the Enchanted Shield. So this is like a good example of a passive item, because it working automatically is, is it's pretty clear what that does. Um, so this one this one gives you uh, one piece of armor every, uh, every level. You can see that show up on the top left there, which is pretty nice. And then we can also buy armor individually, but this will generate it for us, which is very useful. Um, so definitely, definitely a fan of this. It's like a nice early game pickup, right? So I think that's I think that's pretty cool. But anyway, yeah, so a lot of this level design is very much like, yeah, a compromise between being like handmade and not. Because there's more, there's more levels than you'll ever see in a normal run. So it's not like you're playing through the same content every time. But but, you know, it can certainly get a little repetitive, so I'm hoping that the ranking system kind of, you know, staves that off for people. As well as just, I, I don't know, in some ways I think it's nice because if there's something you're struggling with, you can retry it, right? Instead of just getting something different every time where you you get better overall, but you never really get the chance to retry that specific thing unless you put in, like, the same seed again. Uh, which I suppose could be a feature here, even, even with that in mind. But I do think... Uh, oh, did me the... Oh, there we go. Um, but... Yeah, so it's definitely a compromise. It's it has seemed to work out okay so far. I was really scared when starting development that like people would see this and be like, "Oh man, it's not totally random. That's that's worthless. I'm not playing this." But I, I've seen a couple people mention it as an issue, but not a lot. Most people seem to be fine with it, so I'm not too worried about it. That is a shame. We got. Not, I'm gonna go up here and get a couple more gems before we go into the shop. Um, so, yeah, it's still, we're still gonna kind of see how it pans out, but I think it's working so far. Uh, let's take Crit Jelly, it's a good one. Critical hit, and we get more critical hits. Never, nothing, nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, um, so I definitely think, um, yeah, I definitely think that's a bit of a risk. So we'll see how that pans out for people, and I'm definitely gonna be looking into ways to, you know, have some more variation and stuff like that, but I don't know, we'll see how that goes. Um... Anyway, yeah, so as you can see, I'm kind of building up a good array of items at this point. Uh, this is the uh, active item frog, uh, so we can't do anything with him yet. until Once we get an active item that you actually press a button to use, then you can sell that to him. And the reason he's there, uh, one of my big like pet peeves with a lot of other roguelikes... Oh, we got a crit. That was pretty nice. That was very clutch. Um, 
One of my big pet peeves with other roguelikes is uh, I really hate when you get like a chest and you're all excited, and then you get an active item that re you get an item an item of some kind that replaces another item you're using, and then you uh, and then but like you don't like it as much, so you just don't take it, and then that chest ended up being worthless. I really wanted to like avoid that, so you know if you get something out of the chest that you don't really like, you can just sell it, and then you still got something. So. I think that's a pretty a pretty nice way to handle things, hopefully. Um, so I definitely, yeah. I oh no! Are you kidding me? I messed up the last jump. That's terrible. Oh my gosh. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my, ah! Yeah, this last section is really hard. Fun fact, it used to actually be like twice as hard. I used to have like twice as many cannons here, but I, I literally could not get through here without dying. And like, you know, there's definitely the thing in games where it's like, if you're the person who made it, uh, we did S-Rank it though, that felt good. Um, if you're the person who made it, you're probably going to be one of the best people at it. Like you gotta, because there's a lot of levels I make where I'm like, this is kind of easy. I hope people don't get like bored playing this. And then I'll see someone else play it and it'll be like the hardest thing ever you know um <laughs> like you know they'll, they'll you know they'll be like dude this is so insanely hard like a lot of people have compared this game to like you know meat boy and like a thousand one spikes and stuff like that and that was very much like not the intention right uh i think we're gonna skip by we don't really yeah i think there's nothing here i really i can get another piece of armor but i don't think that's worth the 50 here um but like, yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, you know, that was certainly not my intention to invoke those comparisons. Like, I, I think I'm definitely going for something that's pretty tightly designed. But yeah, no, I'm definitely not trying to make something like super frustrating, right? Because um, I've seen some people say that I should lean into that more, right? I should, you know, um, I should, I should make the game like you die in one hit, right? And everything is like super insane, but. I'm glad I'm not doing that. I, uh, you know, I, I definitely don't intend this game to be, like, streamer rage bait, you know? Um, so, I'm glad, I hope people, when people play it, they realize that's not the vibe. But, uh, maybe it is, and I'm wrong, which, uh, you know, valid. Um, <laughs> if, that, if that's the reason people end up enjoying it, I will still be very happy, even if it was not necessarily intentional. I, I think that's the fun of game design, is, like, you know, you, you are only one person, right? Like, there's only... Like, th there's only so much you're going to be able to see about your game, right? Like, I'll, I'll build this level, right? And I'll be like, oh, wow, I totally expect the player to just go up like this. But someone might play it who isn't me and then just try to go up like this, right? Where you wall jump instead. And then that could be a whole thing that I would never consider because I'm one person with one brain that works a certain way, right? So it's it's all about that. Or, like, someone wouldn't see this thing coming. Because to me, I'm like, yeah, it's coming from above. You can see that. That's shown earlier. But some people don't see that, right? And you have to, cause you also have to make the active decision of, like, well, is that just us being different? Or is like, is that a problem? You know? And that, that's a hard thing to do. Anyway, that's floor one, which is kind of, like, I don't know, this is maybe underselling it a little, but that is just kind of like the generic tower floor, right? So floor two, this is where things get a little more spicy. This is the factory floor. So you can see I'm do I have all these conveyor belts. I'm dodging, like, things on the, on the conveyor belts. I've got these little wrench enemies that are a lot of fun. Those guys took me forever to animate. I was very happy with how they turned out, but the animation of them, like... Grabbing the wrench and then throwing it, that took me a while to get right. It is, I don't know. I think with, like, pixel art like this, everything looks really simple. And sometimes it is, right? Like, sometimes I, I kind of am living the dream of, like, I'll think of something and then, oh, we should go to the shop. Uh, I'll think of, like, a thing to make and then within 20 minutes I'll have, like, a really nice, for, ooh, we're going Jester Bomb, baby. Actually, yeah, this is a great shot. We can just do both of these. So this might be my favorite active item in the game. This lets you do, like, an explosion on the ground, and then you get to do uh, two more in the air. So you can kind of go, uh, uh, uh. So it's sort of, it's a very multimodal item, right? Because you can use it for jumping, you can use it for correcting a jump that you maybe didn't like, um, or you can use it, uh, you can use it for, like, you know, raiding down terror on your, on your opponents, which is nice. And then I also got the shock bracelet, which was actually, I think, the first passive item I ever made, where you hit the ground, then you get a nice little shock wave. Uh, it's very fun. Uh, all the items in this game can be stacked. So if you get, like, 10 of those shock bracelets, you'll shoot out, like, 10 shock waves, which is very fun. Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. So I definitely, I definitely get a lot out of that. Um... Oh, we got another item right here. I'm definitely getting a good chance to show off the items, which is nice. Um, 
So let's go here and then, ooh, look at us, woo! All right, so this is the bag of wins. This makes it so you go a little higher every time you hit the ground. And I wanna see, can I do the speed running tech? Oh yeah, all right. So yeah, one thing I, some people have discovered by accident that I think is a lot of fun. This was not intentional, right? And that kind of goes back to the thing about like people will find things that you did not intend in any way, right? Um, but uh, you, uh, if you hop off the wall briefly and then slash your sword, yeah, and then go back on it, you'll shoot straight up, which is a very fun use of the mechanics. Uh, that's never part of the level design. I never expect people to do that, but I'm very excited to see what the speedrunning community can do with stuff like that. Um, I'm hoping this game gets one. Um, <laughs> oh, oh man, I did not mean to do that. But yeah, you can see me using the bomb there. It's kind of nice for stuff like this, where it's like you just want a little more height sometimes, right? Or it's like, oh no, I want to correct this or like get myself a little more. So you can, definitely can use it in a lot of creative oh i did not need to get hit there Ooh, you would think after playing all these levels like fifty thousand times i'd be a little better at them but uh looks are surprising so yeah there we can avoid that so i think something that balances a lot of the act because a lot of them are like really good right like a lot of them are really really powerful um but i think the thing that balances them is you have to make the active decision to use them right like the levels are never designed around you having them so you always need to make that like oh i could use this here and you'd you'd be surprised how many like people don't do that i've seen a lot of people just not even about this game in general just say like yeah if a game has like activated items i like never use them because i forget they exist uh, and i'm like yeah that's fair <laughs> all right this is a uh, missile mayhem this is kind of like the i try to give each floor like a puzzle level if that makes sense so it's like because this game I, I would never call this game a puzzle platformer oh we got two let's go let's go that's awesome all right um i would never call this game a puzzle platformer but i it does have some like minor puzzling elements so i try to do like one stage each floor that kind of makes you think a little more uh so this one is all about avoiding uh homing missiles and also leading them in various places which you'll see a little later so we got that oh oh look at that oh look at us so here, you gotta jump off this to get across that pit, so that's kind of a little puzzle right there. Uh, I'm gonna skip the shot because we're, we're schmoovin'. Um, ooh, oh my gosh. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. Ooh, 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 there we go. So yeah, here you gotta use two of them, so it's a little tougher, you gotta line those up. All right. And then here's where things get really puzzly. Um, you can relieve that missile in there and break that slime, and then you gotta do that now in increasingly harder ways. Um, I very much got this idea from, uh, there's a boss, in, I don't mean to keep bringing up Mario Galaxy, but there's a, there's a boss in Mario Galaxy called Mega Leg, where you have to lead bullet bills into, like, his weak spot, which are, like, homing after you, so you have to kind of lead them the right way, and I always thought that was such a, that was such a fun and clever boss fight, especially because you have some creativity in how you want to handle that, right? So that, that kind of led to this section right here where you've got to get to the portal and there's a bunch of them all around it and you have to kind of get creative about how you want to lead the thing into them so we can kind of do stuff like that so you can see it took out that one that one took out that one and then we can lead this one up here and then hopefully oh oh no let's see if we can get this so if we can go down here and then that might have hit the one on the side no it hit the one above it that's a shame and then bam there we go so i you got to get kind of creative with how to deal with it because this game is pretty tight but i do like to have some sections where players get like a little creativity of how they want to handle things um and sometimes i don't intend for them to have that but then you know uh then they then they <laughs> they, end up ma they end up making that for themselves anyway um so yeah, let's see what we got in here. Um, all right, uh, fuzzy dice. All right, that's a that's a solid. I, I kind of need to buff that one, honestly. Uh, it's not bad, but one free reroll is really only saving you like ten gems, like on average per shop, and like and the game's a little longer now, so that's a little better. But it's still, I wouldn't call it like a great investment, right? Because um, up until a week ago, this game was only six levels long. This actually would have been the last level, but I have just. Oh, we got another one. Oh, oh, let's go. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Alright, well, I'm, I'm actually going to use our free roll here, so it did come in handy. Um, I would like to show off some of the other... Yeah, alright, we'll, we'll switch. As much as I'm going to miss the bomb, we'll, we'll, we'll switch. Um, so this is the uh, this is the kunai. This is a very fun item. It's bit, You can kind of tell it's the first active item. It's very simple. It's just like, hey, shoot in front of you, and that's that's fun. So, oh, heart trophy. That's a good one. Uh, this, is, this might be the second best item in the game, honestly. Yeah, I'm definitely going to switch items a little more often than I normally would, just because, you know, I, I want to show off as much of the game as possible. So... We can go up here. So yeah, this this level's a little puzzly. It's not quite to the same extent, but there are, you do have to think a little. It's like, oh, 
how do I, how do I get through here without while well, hitting the switch the right way? So stuff like that. And then these are the tank enemies. Uh, I'm very very proud of the sprite work for these guys. These are actually my Discord profile picture, uh, or like a GIF of them. So I think that's a lot of fun. They're actually they're the only enemies in the game with like real like AI, if that makes sense. So like I kind of didn't really get to show it off super well there. I'll you, you will get a better view of that in a little. Uh, here let's. Ooh, look at that. The the kunai does help a lot here. So this section, you gotta avoid them shooting you. But uh, for the ta oh god, oh jeez, whoo, whoo, whoo. Oh look at that. All right, there we go. But yeah, so for the tanks, like they actually have like AI. They can like you know, they can see you and be like, oh wow, there's a person there. I'm gonna like move towards them and stuff like that. A lot of the other enemies don't necessarily do that, which I don't think is a problem. But I do want to have a couple more enemies that. Oh my god. Oh, I got so lucky there. Holy, holy cannoli. Um, I do want to have a couple more enemies that, um, you know, kind of, uh, react to you a little more. So we can see with this guy, right? Like, he had the explanation mark, he's coming towards me, and then he can start shooting, and if I get too close, he gets nervous and he starts backing up, right? So stuff like that. Um, I'm very proud, I've never really done an enemy like that before, so I was very proud of that when that, that happens. So you can see him backing up a little. Alright, we're gonna, he's enough showing off, we're gonna, we're gonna kill him now. So you can kill him like that, boom, there we go. So yeah, he, that's actually the, I think he's the tank, uh, <laughs> the tankiest, that's funny. He's the tankiest enemy in the game, but he takes like, uh, uh, let's see, I think it's six sword hits, or like, I believe 12 kunai hits, so it definitely takes a lot. Alright, this is floor three, this is kind of the, like, uh, the Sky Garden floor, very much inspired by like the Mario Kart track of the same name, right? Like, it's very, like, grass, I don't know, I think like grass clouds, I think that's such a great aesthetic that I don't think it's, or like, like the Jack and the Beanstalk vibes, you know, like, like this is this is awesome so let's real quick we'll go to the shop i just want to show off a couple more active items if we can oh good good perfect timing let's get this too um all right so this is lightning in a bottle this one is a very i would say a very skill-based active item so this one lets you dash and the dash is actually invincible so instead of using this fruit here we can jump off this wall and then just go across like that which i think is really fun um so it lets you it let, this is kind of another one i'm excited to see what speedrunners do with it's very much like you know, something you can get very creative with if you want to. So we can go here, we can go here, and then there. Oh, we missed. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, I really threaded that needle. I'm glad I'm actually getting some decent gameplay here. I was really worried I would, like, die, which would be very, very bad. Um, so we can go up here, go across the gap here. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. All narrowly went in the spikes there. Um, but, yeah, I'm very proud of how this level turned out. This might be my favorite one from Floor 3, honestly. I think there's... I don't know. When I when I had my, like, you know, every game starts with an idea. And for me, they're always, like, a vision in my head. Like, I'll be in the shower and I'll get, like, an image of, like, a character bouncing around like this. And I'll be like, oh, that would be fun. I feel like this level is the closest to that original vision I had. Where I was like, oh, man, it'd be really fun if you had a sword and you can pogo off stuff. And there'd be, like, speed boosts you could go through. And then there'd be, like, a lot of, like, hard reaction-based platforming to that like this. Right? So I think this is very much, like, in tune with my... With my original vision so i i don't know it brings me a certain amount of joy to be able to to go through that uh and be like yeah this is what's in my head but like in real life i think that's what makes game design special right is that you'll have this idea in your head and then all of a sudden it'll be real and you can show it to people and pick up a controller and play it um all right so this is larry's liftoff this is the most experimental level of the game because you play as an entirely different character so this is larry um you get you can flop around you can shoot eggs which is a lot of fun um so I can do all sorts of stuff like this, which is great. I was a little worried that having to change character mid-run uh, would be like a big ask for people, but so far it has it has not seemed to be the case. Um, people have seemed to you know enjoy it a lot, and also I was worried it would just be unintuitive to be like, hey, you gotta like unlearn everything you've learned and use a new character. But I uh, I was hoping to make the controls like simple enough so that wouldn't be too much of it because this is really just like flap and then you can press x to attack you also never have to kill anything either so if you want to just flap you can kind of get away with that right so i think it ends up working out i also just from a development perspective oh i did not mean to get hit there whoops I, I say that every time like obviously no one ever means to get hit but i don't know i uh every time i'm like oh i shouldn't have done that which is good i mean I, obviously i made the game so maybe i'm a little biased but I, you know it's very important to me that when people get hit in this game it does feel like their fault right i do want to start tweaking hitboxes a little because i i would agree with some criticism that um 
the uh, the hitboxes for some of the characters are a little a little big. Um, so I would certainly like to, uh, especially like the player. Um, but there's, there's a lot of times where you get hit where it's like, ah, yeah, could have been a little more forgiving, right? Like, it's never like it doesn't make sense, but it's like, I think generally more leeway would be nice, right? Uh, I did try implementing something like that for this demo, uh, but it threw off like a bunch of the physics. So I was like, all right, that will be, that will be a task for next time, right? Um, so we can go through here. This, this section is pretty like self-explanatory, right? You just kind of go through and then... And then we can go over here, uh, carpet bomb that guy. And then this part is probably the hardest section of the whole level. You have to deal with all these flying guys while also dealing with the cannonballs coming from above. So in a similar way to that, this was kind of the image I had in my head for like the bird gameplay, where like you have to like fly around and weave through a bunch of different stuff. I, I think that's a lot of fun, right? Um, so I, this level kind of has a bit of a weird crescendo where I feel like that part's the hardest part. And then, I don't know, this part's a little more simple. I kind of wish I had put this a little earlier in the level. So I think if I had any regrets about it, it might be just that. I wish I had like put this in a different place because even this is like the last part here. I think this is like, it's a lot of fun, but I, I don't think it's that hard, but maybe you could argue it's like a nice breather after all the really hard stuff you did just go through. So uh, this level also, I think, has the most gems out of any level in the game. A 338 is a lot, but I don't know. I'm definitely going to start uh, pretty soon. I, we're going to skip the shop here because we're right at the last level. Um, I definitely am going to start scaling up shop prices as you get up in the tower. Because as you can see, you get more items that help you get more. Like I literally, while saying that sentence, I got like 60 of them, uh, right? <laughs> oh, uh, what was I going to say? Um, so I'm definitely going to start scaling up shop prices as you go up the tower a little bit. Because right at this point in the run... Like, like, you can walk, like, you can see how many gems I have. Like, I can walk into a shop and buy everything. And, like, that's kind of nice, but I don't want that to be, like, super common. Like, people, you know, that that should be something that happens, like, oh, I'm getting mauled here, though. Oh, my God. Um, that, that should be something that happens, like, relatively rarely. And right now, like, the second you get this far, it starts happening, like, really commonly. So, I'm very much seeing why other games, like, scale up their shop prices like that. Uh, but I would definitely like to implement something similar. It's not like it's that hard, either. That might be, like, the next thing I do when I go back to working on the game after Next Fest. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Wow. Look at that. We made it. Woo! <laughs> Okay, I think I believe that was the last level. This went by really quickly. Um, let's see. All right, then. So the end here, you get a run complete with uh, total rank. So you got a rank for each of the levels, and then those get tallied up and averaged. So we got an A. Uh, you have if you want to get an S at the end, every single level had to be an S, which is very hard to do. Um, so I I've had challenges in my Discord server in the past uh, where people have you know, race to be the first person to get the S rank in the world, which was really fun. I, I got a lot out of that. So I'm hoping to do something like that again soon now that I have more levels and it's harder to get an S rank than ever before. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, yeah, let's go buy a couple things, and I, I think we can probably call this one. Um, so you can see here I can get this and get a little bit more extra health, uh, and then we can dabble in a couple of the skins. I'll, I can only get one of them. Actually, I can either get these two or one. Uh, I'll do the I'll do the gold one. This is probably my favorite. Just uh, yellow is my favorite color, so I'm a little partial to this one. Uh, but I think it's a lot of fun. So yeah, this right now the ar the different armor sets don't do anything. They will in the future. I'm gonna have a system where they all give you different like stat bonuses and stuff. So that way there's a reason to get them even if you don't like the way they look. And then I'm also gonna make it so the stat bonus you get for each armor is decoupled from the set itself. So you could mix and match any armor set and any effect it has. That way, like, I really hate it in games where, like, there's something you don't... Where you can customize your character and, like, you there, you don't like the way something makes you look. And then there's, um... and But, like, it's, like, the best thing to wear, so you have to wear it. Like, I hate that. Like, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna have the armor do something and not just be cosmetic, you have to be able to mix and match. Otherwise, that's terrible. Like, I really... I feel strongly that I don't want to do that, so... That's certainly something that will be coming in the future. Um, anyway, yeah, the rest of the development is really just finishing up the tower, adding more levels. You guys saw a solid chunk of the levels in the game, but uh, there's more. You'll have to check out the demo if you want to see for yourself. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, this is Tower of Dreams. Uh, this is kind of the first developer commentary. I'll definitely be doing more of these, especially if you guys like them. But anyway, uh, thank you so much. I love you all, and I will catch you soon. Bye.